بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ہوپ یو آل فائن لیکچر فور گریڈ نائن کیمسٹری چیپٹر نمبر سکس لیکچر نمبر ٹین اینڈ آئی ایم مس از سائرا جما دا ٹاپک وچ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس از اباؤٹ دا سیلف اسیسمنٹ ایکسرسائز سکس پوائنٹ تھری اینڈ کوشچن نمبر ون سوڈیم کلورائڈ which is also called a uh, table salt and glucose both are soluble in water but the solubility of sodium chloride is greater than glucose explain why question is why solubility of table salt is greater than solubility of glucose so what are the reason solubility of sodium chloride is greater than glucose because it is an ionic compound ionic compound the compound which are made up of metal and non metal sodium is metal and chloride ion comes from chlorine chlorine is non metal so i told you that when metal and non metal combine together they form ionic compound so sodium chloride is an ionic compound and is um, and it is an ionic compound and more polar than glucose due to greater electronegativity differences between metals and non metal they are highly polar and the attraction of sodium ion and chloride ions with water is greater sodium ions and chloride ions are, are greatly attracted by the water so as a result they will dissolve in water readily or rapidly glucose is covalent compound and less polar and has weaker attraction with water molecule hence its solubility is lesser than sodium chloride sodium chloride are or they have greater attraction with water while glucose which is covalent compound due to its uh, less polarity due to its weaker attraction with water molecule uh, and um, covalent compound nature they are lesser attracted by the water molecule and hence solubility of glucose is lesser than uh, sodium chloride question number 2 in each in which liquid of each of the following pairs you would expect potassium chloride and ionic compound to be more soluble potassium chloride is ionic compound it is uh, uh, you can see that uh, in which compound or in which pair Uh, it is more soluble in pair a water or carbon tetrachloride ionic compound i told you they are polar in nature so definitely according to the principle like dissolves like potassium chloride is polar compound so according to like dissolve like principle it will dissolve in polar solvents like water and methanol water and methanol uh, i i already explained in my previous lecture that water and methanol are miscible in each other or soluble in each other the reason is due to similarity in their structure similarity in their nature and uh, uh, similarity in the type of intermolecular forces so both are polar in nature so potassium chloride will dissolve in water and methanol in first pair it will dissolve in water and in second pair it will dissolve in methanol where carbon tetrachloride and benzene are non polar so potassium chloride will not dissolve in these two liquids question number 3 which of the following pairs of liquids are miscible water and benzene are miscible no why because water is polar and benzene is non polar compound so water will not miscible or soluble in benzene b benzene and carbon tetrachloride answer is yes because benzene is a non polar and carbon tetrachloride is non polar both are non polar so both both are miscible in each other part c oil and benzene yes because oil and benzene both are non polar so benzene and oil they are miscible in each other because benzene and carbon tetrachloride oil and benzene all are non polar and according to like dissolves like principle non polar liquid dissolves in non polar solvent or non polar solute dissolve in non polar solvent this was all about self assessment exercise 6.3 mm. 
next topic is about the effect of temperature on solubility very very important topic always one of the long question of paper and you have to write uh, it in detail so uh, the way i explain it over here try to do it in the same way uh, because it contain all the explanation which is uh, which are required so effect of temperature on solubility when a solution is formed by adding salt in it there are three possibilities with reference to effect of temperature on solubility what are those three possibility first one it depend upon the type of reaction which type of reaction is there first type of reaction is endothermic reaction and you have learned about endothermic reaction in your previous classes that the type of reaction in which heat is absorbed that's why i mention it over here heat is absorbed those type of reactions are called endothermic reaction the type of reaction in which heat is absorbed to break the attractive forces between the ions of solute is called endothermic reaction you can see the solute in this case is sodium chloride and uh, sodium ion chloride ion they are attracted to each other through ionic bond and if we want to break this bond we have to provide heat or we have to heat this sodium chloride molecule by heating this sodium chloride formula unit hot molecule because ionic compound they never form molecule if you want to break this formula unit of sodium chloride we have to heat it after heating sodium ion and chloride ion will separate out or it will get ionized so we are provide we are giving heat or this reaction required heat or this reaction absorb heat so these type of reactions in which heat is required or heat is absorbed are called endothermic reaction so all the endothermic reaction their solubility increases by increasing temperature okay which type of reaction solubility increases by increasing temperature those reaction which are endothermic which need heat to uh, propagate so those type of reaction the solubility increases by increasing temperature uh, here we have some examples solubility of potassium bromide solubility of sodium nitrate potassium nitrate and ammonium chloride all these salts their solubility increases by increasing temperature because the reaction or, or solubility of these react these uh, salts are uh, endothermic the reaction uh, are endothermic one more example if uh, you add 34.7 gram potassium chloride in 100 grams of water and temperature is 20 degree centigrade what will happen at this temperature a uh, 34.7 gram will easily dissolve in 100 gram of water but if you add more in the same water what will happen the extra amount will not dissolve in it and it will settle down at the bottom but if you heat this solution the saturated solution and increase the temperature till 100 degree centigrade you will see that the that salt which was settled down at the bottom it will get dissolved and even by adding more salt in it at this high temperature it will also dissolve it means you are converting the saturated solution into a uh, super saturated solution by heating it and by adding more salt in it even when you reach till 56.7 grams what will happen now the at 100 degree centigrade the saturated solution is converted into super saturated solution and at 100 degree centigrade all this 56.7 gram will dissolve in it at this high temperature okay and when you will go on adding more salt again you will reach at a point when the extra will settle down at the bottom and that solution we call super saturated solution now if you decrease the temperature of this solution from 100 degree centigrade if you cool it down again uh, till 20 degree centigrade what will happen at 20 degree centigrade we learn that only the 34.7 grams um, are dissolved so out of this 56.7 gram 34.7 gram will dissolve at 20 degree centigrade and this 22 gram will left 
and settle down at the bottom. It means that the solution will again convert it into saturated solution. The extra amount will settle down at the bottom. So you saw that by increasing the temperature from 20 to 100 degrees centigrade, more salt dissolved in this 100 gram of water, 56.7 gram. But at low temperature at 20 degrees centigrade, only 34.7 grams of potassium chloride dissolved in it. So this is, con this is confirmed that the solubility of potassium chloride, which is an ionic compound and the reaction is endothermic. So by increasing the temperature from 20 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade, the amount of it dissolved in 100 gram of water also increases from 34.7 gram to 56.7 grams. Second case is exothermic reaction. The first one was endothermic reaction and the second case is exothermic reaction. And you know that exothermic reactions are those reactions in which heat is given out. Heat is released by reaction. And suppose if you have uh, lithium sulfate or if you have cerium sulfate and when you dissolve it in uh, a beaker or in a test tube, and when you touch the test tube, you will feel that it get warm. Why it get warm? Because these are the reaction in which heat is released. And definitely that heat release will uh, also warm up the test tube. So from warming the test tube, it is, uh, we can identify that the reaction is exothermic, where heat is released by the reaction. So those type of reaction in which heat is released, they are already releasing heat. So they don't need uh, more heat or extra heat. So in this case, if you uh, you will increase the temperature of the reaction, what will happen? The solubility of these salt will decreases. Okay, it will not increase it. The solubility of these salt will decreases. So there are some of the salt or some of the substances whose solubility decreases by increasing temperature. And well, which type in especially in which type of reaction? If we increase the temperature in exothermic reaction, those reactions in which heat is given out, they don't need extra heat. So if you will give heat to those salt, the, the dissolved salt will convert it back into the undissolved form and those salt will settle down at the bottom. Examples are lithium sulfate and cerium sulfate. Okay. Example for this uh, uh, exothermic reaction, we have example that take a beaker and if you put water in it and you heat it, you will see bubbles appear in this beaker. Those bubbles which appear in the beaker, uh, those bubbles are of air. Since air is less soluble in hot water than in cold water, air comes out of water in the form of bubbles. This means that solubility of air in water decreases with increasing temperature. Okay, solubility of air in water decreases by increasing temperature. So the water will come out in the form of bubbles. This is a second example, uh, or uh, you can take it first example. The second example is you might have observed in a home aquarium that the fish show sign of stress in a hard day. The fish, they come at the surface in aquarium in a hot day because the dissolved oxygen in water decreases and then the fish need more uh, oxygen for breathing. So they come at the surface and then they take uh, uh, air from the surface water where oxygen comes out at, uh, where, where the air or oxygen comes in the undissolved form and comes at the surface even in uh, in large quantity the undissolved oxygen comes at the surface and that's why the fishes they come at the surface to use uh, dissolved oxygen for breathing one more example you can use of the fizzy drink uh, you have heard that the fizzy drink should be uh, keep in freezer or keep in fridge why we should keep the fizzy drink in fridge because the carbon dioxide which is dissolved in fizzy drink its solubility increases by keeping it cold or by decreasing the temperature. If you will keep it in fridge, uh, so what will happen? The solubility of carbon dioxide in the fizzy drink will increase. But if you will keep the fizzy drink, Pepsi, Savannah, Miranda, if you will keep uh, these outside from the fridge, 
outside the temperature increases so due to high temperature the solubility of carbon dioxide in those uh, easy drink will decreases and when you open the cap or the tin the gas evolved out from the tin the solubility uh, that's why on the tin and on the bottle it is mentioned that keep uh, it in cold place or keep it chill third case is uh, no change in heat these are the reaction in which uh, the reaction is nor uh, endothermic or neither endothermic nor exothermic that type of reaction if you increase the temperature or if you decrease the temperature the solubility with uh, the solubility of these salt is little or not affected by change in temperature example is of sodium chloride in water when we dissolve sodium chloride in water and if we increase temperature if we decrease temperature it will show little or no effect on the solubility of sodium chloride the reason i told you the reaction is neither uh, exothermic nor endothermic you can see neither the heat is absorbed neither the heat is absorbed mean the reaction is not endothermic nor release mean the reaction is not exothermic okay so those reaction which are neither uh, endothermic nor exothermic the increase or decrease of temperature will show minimum effect that minimum effect mostly we ignore it so these are the three uh, possibilities or three cases uh, which affect uh, the solubility of different substances by changing the temperature i told you it is very important question mostly long question in paper and learn in the way which i explained uh, because all the example and the three possibilities these are not in your book so try to write it on or note down this explanation in your notebook okay along with this graph don't forget to draw the graph graph is very important okay because the explanation uh, this graph will support uh, those explanations okay the graph is between the temperature and uh, solubility solubility unit is gram per 100 gram of water and temperature in degree celsius you can see different plots the plots which or the curves which uh, increases which goes on increasing like these red one this purple one the red one for potassium nitrate the red one for sodium nitrate this uh, purple one for potassium bromide this uh, purple or black one for ammonium chloride these one two three four salts these curves show the increasing solubility by increasing temperature you can see when we move from left from left to right uh, the solubility of these uh, salts or ionic compound increases by increasing temperature and uh, one example is for sodium sulfate you can see this na2so4 and the curve goes down this down curve show that the solubility of sodium sulfate decreases by increasing temperature which means that the reaction of sodium sulfate is uh, exothermic that's why by increasing temperature its solubility decreases and the rest of the four their solubility increases by increasing temperature means that their reaction or their solubility is endothermic reaction one example for uh, neither exothermic nor endothermic is sodium chloride you can see the curve of sodium chloride is just a straight line the straight lines show constant constant solubility solubility uh, is uh, you can see about 38 grams per 100 gram of water uh, this is for the sodium chloride and it is constant uh, by increasing the temperature you can see nothing happened to the solubility it remains 40 uh, sorry 38 grams per 100 grams of water so this graph is uh, very important along with the explanation of uh, effect of temperature on solubility we have to draw this graph very important okay uh, Self-assessment exercise 6.9 using this figure like the graph you have to answer this question question number one at what temperature the solubility of potassium nitrate and potassium bromide is same potassium nitrate and potassium bromide potassium nitrate is this kno3 and potassium bromide is this kbr and you have to see at which point these two curves cut each other so 
potassium nitrate and potassium bromide they cut each other at this point you can see at this point because this black curve or purple curve is called potassium bromide and this red one is potassium nitrate so this is the point where the two curves cut each other and their solubility is same we have to check the temperature temperature if you go down it is about uh, 55 to 57 uh, um, 55 yeah 55 is best at 55 degrees centigrade the solubility of uh, potassium nitrate and potassium uh, bromide is the same next one is what is the solubility of At what temperature the solubility of potassium nitrate and potassium bromide is same? This is 55 degrees centigrade is uh, the answer of the first question. Okay, I mistakenly mentioned it in at position two. This is position one. Second is what is the solubility of potassium bromide at uh, 45 degrees centigrade? Potassium bromide is here, and 45 degrees centigrade is this point this point and if we find out the solubility of uh, potassium bromide at this 45 degree centigrade we can see it is 80 80 grams per 100 gram of water so the solubility of potassium bromide is uh, 80 grams per uh, 100 gram of water okay I wrote it 83 degree, but this is uh, not exactly 83, almost 80. Which is greater at 40 degree centigrade, the solubility of sodium nitrate or solubility of potassium bromide? Solubility of sodium nitrate and potassium bromide. So definitely sodium nitrate curve is above the potassium bromide. So solubility of sodium nitrate will be greater than potassium. Bromide. So we will write sodium nitrate, which is 96 gram per 100 gram of water, while potassium bromide is 78 gram per 100 gram of water. So solubility of sodium nitrate is great. Okay. And identify from the graph the compound whose solubility is little affected with increase in temperature. So I told you sodium chloride graph is a straight line, which show its solubility is little affected with increase in temperature. Okay. So at what temperature uh, solubility of potassium nitrate and potassium bromide is same? Potassium nitrate and uh, potassium bromide, they are same. Temperature I told you is uh, 55 degree centigrade. Okay, 55 degree centigrade. And the 83 which I mentioned is actually this uh, solubility. The 83 I mentioned for solubility. That at 55 degree centigrade. So solubility is 83 this is 80 so this is about 83 gram per 100 gram of water okay and second point uh, at 55 degrees centigrade and third sodium nitrate solubility is greater and sodium chloride solubility is little affected with increase in temperature next topic is about the comparison of solution suspension and collide solution you have learned in the previous lectures that it is a homogeneous mixture Simply we say that when solute we mix in solvent, it will give us a solution. But solution is a homogeneous mixture. Homo means same and genius means state or phases. So all the particles are in a same uh, physical state, liquid, solid, or gases. And all the particles are um, evenly distributed, like they are present in all sides, in, uh, in brim, in bottom, at sides. All these particles are evenly distributed. Sizes of these particles are very small. The sizes of particles of solution are 0.1 till 1 nanometer. And they cannot be seen with naked eye, not even with ordinary microscope. We can see them only with the uh, electron microscope. And uh, these particles can pass through ordinary filter paper because the pores in ordinary filter paper are big enough. And these particles are very small, so they can easily pass through those pores and even
even they can pass through ultra filter paper the pores of ultra filter paper are smaller than ordinary filter paper but the size of solution particles are very small that they can even pass through the ultra filter paper and solution uh, is unable to scatter light scattering of light uh, i will show you a video uh, then you will understand the concept the lights but just keep this in your mind that the uh, scattering of light is only uh, like those particles they can scatter the light which are bigger in size okay like the light particle and suspension particle they are bigger in size so they can scatter the light then collides Colliders are fog. Example of colliders are fog. Fog is the water droplets in air, and uh, fog particles, uh, the water droplets or water particles in fog are bigger. They can scatter light. They can. Uh, that's why you can when through window you can see the dust particle. They are also scattering light. The fog is scattering light. Uh, fog is a collide. Uh, the um, uh, the dust particles in air they are collide they are scattering light so these are the example of the light in this case you can see uh, size uh, of particles of solution they are less than one nanometer the lights are greater than one nanometer till 100 nanometer and more than 100 nanometer are for suspension small size the lights are bigger than solution and suspension are the biggest particles and they are heavy even they can settle down at the bottom they are not evenly distributed okay they are and that bottom they are uh, larger in number and upper upper side or at the top there are no particles this is called uneven distribution and if particles are present or at all the side it is called even distribution and it is also called uniform solution okay uniform or even distribution means particles are present at all the sides okay a heterogeneous mixture of tiny particles of substances dispersed through a medium is called collide. Heterogeneous mixture. Solution is homogeneous, but collide and suspension are heterogeneous. They have different physical state. Apparently, a collide look uh, homogeneous when we see with naked eye. The collides also appear uh, homogeneous, but when we see it under the uh, microscope, then we will see that still it has some suspended particles or undissolved particles over there. So it is not homogeneous, it is heterogeneous. So collides are also called false solution. Solutions are called true solution and collides are called false solution. Solutes are also called dispersed phase and uh, solvent are called dispersion medium. And we can say that uh, collides are generally opaque, opaque, which does not allow the light to pass through them. Some are transparent, which can allow the light to pass through them. So they vary. Some are opaque, some are transparent. A particle size are from 1 to 10 is to power 3 nanometer. They can be seen under electron microscope, not under ordinary microscope. They can be seen only under electron microscope, milk, butter, cheese, jam, halwa, jellies, mayonnaise are the examples of the lights. Many medicine bottles, like especially the antibiotic syrups, uh, they are suspension because you can see when you keep that bottle. Uh, you will see that the uh, solute particle or the medicine in that solvent uh, it settled down at the bottom and uh, it is mentioned on the bottle that shake will be for use why is it mentioned because when we shake it then the particle which settled down at the bottom they will mix in the solvent and then it will be uh, used again the solution i told you they does not scatter light so you cannot see anything inside the solution the light just pass through it but the collide and suspension they scatter light so we can see the pathway of light inside this collided solution if in she, uh, suspension uh, suspension i told you is also heterogeneous mixture the particle size are largest in solution and collides and they can disperse light they they can uh, they cannot pass through even ordinary filter paper because they are bigger in size this particle we can see through naked eye, they scatter light, and now in the table there is some comparison. Solution I told you is homogeneous. Suspension and collide are heterogeneous. Uh, they have uh, different physical state. Particle size are 0 0.1 to 1. From greater than 1 to 10 to the power 3 is collide. More than 10 to the power 3 are suspension. They can not be seen with naked eye, not with ordinary, not with electron microscope they can not they can even be seen with naked eye for example when we put sand and water percent can easily be seen with a naked eye 
particles are invisible by naked eye and even in ordinary microscope we cannot see it but we can see only the particles under electron microscope example is when you put a uh, little milk in water it will give us a colored resolution the milk appear trans uh, like solution no particle you can see but when you see milk solution under an electron microscope you will see some suspended particle the fat the undissolved fat particles under the electron microscope particles can pass through ordinary as well as uh, ultra filter paper i told you the size of the solution particles are very small so they can pass through these filter paper the collides uh, are uh, smaller than ordinary filter paper so they can pass through ordinary filter paper but cannot pass through ultra filter paper because the pores of ultra filter papers are very small so uh, the collides cannot pass through them and particles are big enough so they cannot even pass through the ordinary filter paper like i told you when you filter the solution of sand and water sand will left at the ordinary filter paper and water will go down the last point is that the solution they cannot scatter light because the particle sizes are very small and the suspension they can scatter light particle sizes are very big and uh, collide also they can scatter light because the particle sizes are very big uh, this is ordinary filter paper uh, we can we make a cone of it and then we use it for filtration uh, plasma blood blood is a collide and if you want to separate different components of plasma uh, sorry blood blood you know is made up of plasma white blood cell uh, red blood cell and platelets so you can separate all those by using this centrifugal machine which is also called ultra filter paper this is uh, ultra filter uh, ultra filter not paper but ultra filter which is used mostly in filtration of water plants and you can see the pores are very small and through these pores only water molecule can pass through uh, the minerals particle and the other particles they cannot pass through these small pores. They are very small pores, and these pores I told you can see only under microscope, not with the naked eye. Society technology and science is about the, all the things which we are which are present in our surrounding. They are solution. First example is of air. Air is a solution. Air is a solution because uh, you you have learned in the previous lecture that nitrogen is a gas which is present in large percentage in air so nitrogen will act as a solvent and uh, the rest of the gases will act as a solute like, like oxygen carbon dioxide uh, methane water vapor they are dissolved in nitrogen gas so nitrogen gas is solvent and the rest of the gases are solute so uh, air is also um, a solution of gas in gas okay gas in gas and so if water vapors so or liquid in gas also but it is solution mineral water which we are using is again solution it is not only water it has some uh, calcium ion magnesium ion sodium ion potassium ion like minerals are dissolved in it so uh, minerals are uh, like they come from uh, solids so these are solids in uh, liquid so again a type of solution gold is again solution it is a solution of solid in solid which are called alloys you have learned it in the previous lectures alloys are a mixture of metal with metal so gold you know is very soft and we cannot make, make designs of it gold is mixed with uh, copper and um, then copper make the gold hard and then you can you use that 18 karat gold or 22 karat gold to make nice and fine designs of it pure gold from pure gold you cannot make designs of it because it is very uh, soft second brass brass is an alloy of copper and uh, zinc because zinc is a metal and copper is a metal so when you mix them together uh, so it will give us an alloy and that is called brass you can see the color of both gold and brass they are almost same but uh, it is reactive with acid and it is uh, unreactive with only with single acid not with aqua but with single acid dental filling which is called amalgam dental filling or amalgam is an alloy of mercury with tin or silver it is also uh, a solution of solid in solid and solid uh, uh, liquid in solid because mercury is liquid and uh, silver or tin is solid so solid in liquid we use this uh, mixture as a uh, for dental filling alloys are a solution of metals 
I have a uh, video and this video will help you in understanding the scattering of light that how these solution the consider a situation light. if you take yourself to a dark room where there is a window through which sunlight is coming in what will you observe you will see that you are able to see the path that the sunlight is taking in coming inside your room now why do you think it is happening take a look at the picture on the board over here also the picture has been taken in a dark enclosed room now you can see that from this window the path of the sunlight that is coming into the room is visible that is this path of the sunlight is visible now why do you think this is happening or rather how this is happening we shall soon find out first of all let us take a look at a very interesting video in this video an experiment has been performed that is known as the tyndall effect experiment so in this experiment the materials we require are very simple we take two clear glasses and fill them with water we also take a glass of milk this milk will be used to dilute itself with water and lastly to complete the experiment we take a source of light now the experiment we perform is very simple these two glasses of water have been placed side by side and the light is shown you can see that the path of light through the water glasses is not visible now what happens is we add milk to one of the water glasses so thus it forms a dilute solution of milk now let's see what happens if we shine the light if you observe closely you will find that the light path is visible inside the container containing dilute milk but it is not visible in water so what can we say from this we can say that when milk was added the path of light became visible and it is not visible in water so let us analyze this situation and find out what is happening you will be interested to learn that when light falls on any medium or inside any medium it interacts with the particles in the medium so if we consider a light ray that is falling on this particle after falling on this particle light will interact with it or in other words light will be reflected from it so if there are multiple light rays falling on a particle all these light rays will get reflected in all directions around it this is also known as scattering now let us consider what was happening in the video when we had a container which had only water inside the particles inside it were far apart and the particles of water were also small so when light ray was falling on water it was not able to get scattered because the particles inside water were sparse and they were also quite small so this was the reason why the path of the light ray was not visible to you now what we did after this was add milk to it let us find out what changes it brought about the moment we add milk to it milk particles are also getting added along with water now these milk particles are much larger than water particles so when light falls on these milk particles they interact with the milk particles and get reflected or scattered so since after light falls on these particles they get scattered in different directions we are able to see the path that the light beam is taking and it is due to this reason that after addition of milk the path of the light ray or the beam can be seen so now let us analyze what was happening in the case of the dark room so when you are inside a dark room why do you think you are able to see the sunlight this is because at any given time in any room there are a lot of dust particles that are present in the air now these dust particles are quite big in size so when light is falling on these dust particles what is happening light rays interact with these dust particles and after falling on a dust particle they get reflected in 
every direction so after falling on the dust particles light is scattered in all directions and they reach our eyes so it is due to this reason that in a dark room we are able to see the sunlight that is coming in through the window and we are also able to make out the path of the sunlight so we can conclude that through scattering of light we are able to see the path of light and this scattering of light in a medium is known as the tyndall effect as we saw in the case of the video so dear students i'm sure you understand this tyndall effect and scattering of light and i told you that the suspension and colloids both have large uh, particles so those particles can disperse or can scatter the light okay now uh, assignment for the 28th uh, april it is you have to complete your notebooks and do all the self assessment exercises of chapter number 6 and uh, then send me i will check your self assessment exercise okay complete all self assessment exercises of chapter number 6 inshallah in next lecture we will do the exercise thank you